All right, guys, welcome back to another video. I'm super excited for this one because today we're gonna to be talking about history books. And I quickly wanna start off by explaining why I wanna talk about history books, uh, why you should care, and my history with history books. Jeez, that was a mouthful. Let's get into it, right? So first of all, why should you care? I think there's a lot of value to be um, you know, extracted from history books. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I've always read history books and I would like use my Legos to kind of like play out the Roman Empire or something like that, right? I would try to mimic this and build these things and I thought it was awesome. I've always been good at the history courses I took. History was always my thing, I loved it. I even considered at some point becoming a history teacher. So I definitely have this advantage when it comes to you know, reading history because obviously I like reading history. If you don't like it, it's gonna be a little bit rough at the start. But I still am convinced that everybody should read a history book at least once in their life, right? And the thing is, right, most people say, why would I care? Why do I care about history books, you know? Um, why does it matter what's already happened? But the thing is, there's a ton of valuable lessons uh, that I've learned from, for example, this book, which is called Sapiens. It's a book uh, my girlfriend bought for me for Christmas because I really wanted to read it. And uh, it's a brief history of humankind, as the front page says. Uh, it's about 500 pages or so, definitely a good book. It's a multi-million copy bestseller that's also on the cover. So I'm assuming many of you might have uh, read this book. So I'm curious if you've read this book, what you thought of the book. I think it's one of the best books I've ever read. Honestly, it's very well written, very well structured. So I highly recommend the book and it's extremely interesting. Um, so let's start off the thing I've learned. The thing that struck me the most is that in the book, he talks about religion and cultures, ideologies, things like that. And the thing he mentions is that um, most followers of modern religion do not actually follow through on that religion. So what I mean by that is they are supposed to do something, right? They're supposed to be, for example, Christians, supposed to be good, supposed to pray, supposed to do this, supposed to do that, be kind to their neighbors, things like that. But it's very rare to find uh, Christians who are actually true to the core, to the Bible, right? Which is obviously extremely hard. I don't blame them at all. It's extremely difficult and it's hard to find people. Most people are kind of like subtle about it, right? They're not so super serious as, uh, you know, the, the really hardcore Christian people. Uh, and it's the same with the Islam or, you know, whatever Buddhism, right? Most people do not get to that point. Most people do not become the Pope. Most people do not become reach nirvana where they're like free of all struggle right that's not that's really hard not every follower of that religion will get that but the thing is he kind of refers to capitalism in a way where it's not it's not a religion it's kind of like a culture a ideology but it's all encompassing right because the whole world revolves about money capitalism and we all believe in capitalism because we believe that the future has more to offer than we have now and this is a revolutionary idea right because think about it five, six, seven hundred years ago, we thought that the best time has already passed, right? This is the end, uh, civilization is gonna end. Look at the Roman Empire, right? Uh, for example, the Renaissance, perfect example. Everybody was looking, oh, look at the Roman Empire, look what they've done, we gotta recreate that because that's the best um, time uh, to be alive. That was the best time to be born. This was the greatest era of humankind. But ever so slightly since the scientific revolution, as he explains in the book, we started to more so shift our idea of uh, what would what would be the best thing and that's yet to come we have to um, admit our ignorance and therefore do research uh, you know use science to figure out uh, what more is out there and that's why we suddenly started to get all these crazy things like the internet smartphones planes everything all these crazy things and the, the thing that blew my mind first of all is that most of these things like for example railroads seem super basic because it's just kind of like a steam engine at least at the start a steam engine on rail tracks but i think it was only 1880 or something when they first had a public railroad in england which is just crazy to think about that's not even 250 years ago or something like that right it's just crazy to think about at least to me how that evolved so fast because now we have these hyper speed uh, rail tracks where we can go from like Amsterdam to Paris to whatever like Germany everywhere in like a couple hours it's super cheap or relatively cheap it's just crazy to think about right so anyways I was explaining this whole capitalistic idea right so basically what he describes in the book which which struck me as awesome is that this whole all-encompassing capitalism is that uh, compared to Christianity or Islam or Buddhism 
most followers are actually staying true to the core of capitalism. They're consuming a lot of goods. They buy all these things. Uh, they buy the iPhone uh, 8 and then they buy the 9 and then they buy the 10. And there's the whole consumerism mindset, which um, I've read about before. You don't want to buy too much stuff, right? I've even made a video, I think about two years ago right now, like uh, how to stop buying, how to stop being a consumer, because I think that's a very important thing to not fall trapped to that. But even outside of that, the whole society is capitalistic where we are told to invest our money. We learn about saving money. Most conversations he explains in the book uh, at the dinner table are about at least some form of money. What do you, how much do you make? How much do you spend? Uh, where are you gonna invest it? Where do you spend money? And that's kind of when you think about it true, like most things we talk about are money related. It's this whole capitalistic uh, society. And the thing is, it's all because we now believe that the best is yet to come and we invest. And that's also why this whole economic growth started because we introduced credit and credit was a way to buy something that's not yet here, kind of like funded. And then we can actually realize that, like we can actually manifest that thing. For example, if we have a bakery, we can take out a loan, which is obviously credit, and then we can buy the bakery, and then we can sell cakes and we pay off the loan, and we've we've actually manifested that bakery. But back in the day, like really, really back in the day, if you didn't have the money, you could simply not do it, and you would always stay put in that specific situation without a bakery, for example, being a poor farmer. And that whole idea of the best is yet to come after the scientific revolution has revolutionized the way we see life. And me as somebody who is doing a, a master program, right, in research, I've felt like this was so mind boggling to see that just simply because we know so little and we accept the ignorance of humankind, we started to evolve from that and say, hey, you know what, just because we don't know, we can try and figure it out. And we've learned so much over the past hundred years, but it's also just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn. And I thought that was just crazy because all these thoughts, all these ideas and all these things I'm explaining to you guys are all because of this book. It's just a simple history book. And I'm not even finished. I think it's like 20 pages left and I'm already blown away by the, 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 the kind of like, it ignited in me this thought process of, hey, this is crazy because we've learned so much from the past and we can utilize that to become smarter right now. And I feel like it's so useful to read up on that. and so useful to understand what humankind was and what it's becoming, especially, right? Like all the things that are going on right now, it puts it into perspective, which is really, really great. On top of that, I also bought this author's next book. It's called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. If you've read it, let me know what you thought about it. No spoilers, please. Uh, I'm super excited to read it. I'll probably read it next. Um, I'll let you know what I thought about it once I finished it. But I just wanted to thank you guys for watching. Sorry if this was kind of like a ramble video. I thought it was this super awesome idea. And I was so stoked to make this video because I thought, wow, this is something I want to share with people because this is such a interesting life lesson that I learned simply from reading a history book. Who would have thought? Right. Most people nowadays tend to think, oh, we need to read self-help books from self-help gurus, but history books are underrated. So definitely go ahead, at least look into this book. And if you don't want to read this book, look into some other history books, uh, very interesting stories to read, and it might give you a eye-opening perspective. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch you guys next week, 7 p.m. GMT or Thursday, 7 p.m. GMT on the podcast, of course, highly recommended, and I'll catch you guys there. Peace.